Good evening, venerable adjudicators and chairman and gathered rabble. Um, <laughs> stitch together things I will, like a medical student with a suture kit. So basically this debate may at any point burst back open. <laughs> but you can sue me, or rather the person who let me do it in the first place, which is Ross. <laughs> OK, right, this whole debate is regressive. This whole debate is saying, you know all that time and lives and people who lived and died for your freedoms and building up society and civilization and all that crap? Yeah, how about I want to get out of all that business? So could you, like, enact laws and look after the lawsuits and the contractual obligations and the police monitoring of me trying to get out of all that instead of me doing us all a favour and jumping out a window? <laughs> If you want to duel, and even if you agree to it, you are a moron. <laughs> and you can literally get back to Russia if you think that I give so much as a flying swear word, no thank you, about what you do in your spare time back in the hood or wherever you're from. <laughs> I'm going to go on rebuttal, and then I'm going to reiterate our three main points. Now you're all right. Firstly, freedom is not free, as Janis Joplin once said. <laughs> Secondly, justice, not equal sign, freedom. <laughs> and finally, death is not the answer, despite what your loved ones have been telling you. <laughs> As follows. Firstly, consent. They've predicated their whole case, the last speaker predicated her whole case basically on consent. And what myself and Ross are telling you is that you can't consent to things that you cannot consider. Yes, you can consent to things that might have a bad outcome because you can consider what that outcome means. Like if you go bungee jumping, you know, you can consider what may happen and there are a lot of different varieties of things that may happen to you, thank you, no, that, no thank you. But you decide that for yourself. Unfortunately, you cannot consider what will happen to you but you cannot especially consider what will happen to somebody else if they die. They can't consider it for themselves and they can't consider it for you. They can't consider how they will feel if they kill somebody. No thank you ladies and gentlemen, which is something that I never bothered to talk about. And you can't consider what you can think about if you die. So it's always irrational. And irrational people can't give consent to things under every other model of consent that we respect in society. No thank you. They want to talk about placing values on things. It's true. It's about placing values on things. The problem is you cannot value your own death because you don't know what happens next and you cannot comprehend what life for everybody else will be like minus you. But if you want to accept their reasoning, you definitely can't value somebody else's life, no thank you. And you cannot know how you will feel when you have exacted that price and you cannot know what will happen to you afterwards, no thank you, because you cannot assess the value of the price that you are taking from somebody else. You can assess two pounds of flesh, but you cannot assess snuffing out a life. No, th uh, no thank you. They predicated the case on regret being absent and that has been just been abandoned by the second half of the debate. And we think that you may be regretting it, like in that room shouting damn it, or you may be regretting it when you're lying on the floor, no thank you, with a minor grazing wound to the shoulder going, now would be the time to back out, cut your shoulder related losses and run. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have been told that at no point can you back out, so even if you signed the contract last week and have since decided I was quite angry then, not so angry now. <laughs> You think, you think that the Supreme Court are going to exact a contract law that is the price of someone's life. The courts are going to step in and go, look, you knew what you were doing when you signed the contract. And the judge is going to say, yes, you can kill that person in the Phoenix Park at dawn. <laughs> like, I just, I just, I, uh, you know, like so difficult to imagine a situation in which that would be acceptable. Life and death are the kind of decisions we left behind a long time ago. And the decisions became about how we live our lives. That is why we give over some of our freedoms so that we have our protections for how we want to live our lives. These are the decisions that civilization is about. And if you want to worry about life and death, then abandon your material position. Uh, possessions and live in the wild because you ca clearly aren't capable of worrying about the subtler things, Luke.
Okay, why is it that it's okay for an 18 year old to sign up his life for the army, but not okay for what he wants to do instead? Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, I'm against armies, or like, that would be the easy way out of that. <laughs> uh, but no, in reality, it's because wars, we mandate the people who decide what wars are fought on. So we decide what we go to war for in the first place, and you always decide to no, know, thank you, go about going into war and the predication that you will be protected to the utmost and that your death is an absolute absolute last resort, not an immediate choice that you are facing tomorrow. And this idea, uh, this idea that gangs and hoods will be, will be bettered, right, okay, these people are outside the rule of law and we'll probably just go around shooting each other in Ballymun or whatever. Anyway, but also, if we, do we want to suck these people into the state? Do we want to say, look, you and your alienation and your violence and everything, bad, but if you could be violent within the state, that would be much better. Please, please denigrate us all with your filthy little hands. Okay, so moving on, moving on to summarise the debate under our points. Freedom is not free. The contract you enter into is the contract where you exchange some things for other things. And if you don't want to, go and live in a forest. You, you want to protect other people. We want to protect people who in a fit of pique decide that they want to kill somebody or they want to kill their wife who's divorcing them or they want to kill somebody who's fighting over a, a girlfriend. Not every decision, ladies and gentlemen, is life and death. Not everything should have to come down to a duel. You should never have to say the question, well, if you really believe that, why won't you duel for me? Or anything like that. That should never, that should never be a question that you get to ask. You should not be allowed to violate other people by demanding that they become a coward or dead. That is not a fair choice to make. Justice is not revenge, as any family of somebody who's killed under the death penalty say. Those families never come out of the chamber and go, the best bit was when he died. <laughs> I have totally forgotten about my family. <laughs> I enjoyed it so much. Hey, okay, thank you, State. Those people never say that, ladies and gentlemen. And there's a reason, because death has no value. Death has no glory. Don't say it to Cormac's preposterium or he was a lie, because there is no glory in death. <laughs> your death is valueless to me. It is valueless to society. So why don't you come on?